Hi everybody, uh, Steven here. I'm putting this video out uh, just shortly after my video on uh, what is vSAN, vSAN 101. Um, it was brought to my attention that there was something that I had said that may not be 100% correct, but let's take a look at that. It was brought to, brought to my attention by one of my subscribers. I didn't put his name down, but his, uh, it was GS. So big shout out to you. Thank you very much for pointing this out to me. Um, and I wanted to get this video out there. So let's um, take a look at my iPad. In my lecture, this won't be a long video. In my lecture, um, I had put down, I talked about you could do RAID 5 with vSAN, no problems. Yep, that's correct. You need a minimum of four hosts. The space required is 1.33 times. So basically you've got your data being striped across the, uh, the servers uh, and then there's a parity. Okay, that's like RAID 5. Uh, so if you've got a VM that has 100 gig in size, your space will be 1.33 times. That'll be uh, required, it'll be 133 gig and a little bit more for overhead. That's correct, no problems, okay? However, with the new vSAN, the Express Storage Architecture, ESA, the RAID 5 is different. It's actually called Adaptive RAID 5, uh, which is kind of cool. So let's talk a little bit about that. And there's two different ways it's, it's implemented, and it's based on the number of hosts you have in your cluster. So that's what it looks at. It says, hey, do I have X number of hosts in my cluster? I want to maintain the maximum availability. That's kind of what its thinking process is. So if you only got three hosts, so first of all, right now you can do it with three hosts. So that's kind of cool. So I can do RAID 5 with three hosts. Uh, it does what's called a two plus, uh, uh, two plus one. That means we're going to have um, two of our data and then one parity. And that's how it's striping everything across. So you see the first stripe will be a data, data, and then a parity. And then the next stripe will be a data, data, and then the parity again. And then we skew the parity. Just like before, but we're doing it across just three. Uh, the downside, the cool thing about that is you don't need as much servers. That's great. Downside of that is you consume more space. 1.5 times. So again, with the same VM, 100 gig VM, it would take 150 gigs of storage. Now, it's called adaptive for a reason. Let's say I threw in four hosts here. So I had, you know, a fourth host. It would still do this. It would do the two plus one. If I threw in a fifth one, it would still do the two plus one. It would still look exactly like this. It's not going to stripe it across all five. It would still be two plus one. That's it. If I threw in a sixth host, this is where it gets different. So as soon as I throw in a sixth host, what it will do, um, what it will do to say, hey, you know what? I could take advantage of the sixth host. So, so with the sixth host, host added in, what it will do is it's going to say, I'm going to change the striping. I'm going to go to a four plus one stripe. Okay, so what's the advantage of, oh, what does that mean? That means I'm going to have four data and then a parity. And that's what would look like something like this down here. Data one, data two, data three, data four, then a parity. And the next stripe, we skew our parity just like before. What's the advantage of this? First of all, we're skewing our data across multiple, more devices now. So technically an improvement on performance. Uh, another th benefit is the space required is only 1.25 times uh, what I need. So again, that same VM, 100 gigs in size, would only need 125 gigs of storage, and it would have protection. So again, if I lost this server or that drive or whatever, I'd still have data, 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 and a parity. And so I lost all this. I could still figure out what I lost by looking at my data one through three in the parity, I can figure out what, sorry, I don't care about that parity, but I can figure out what this data one was by looking at the parity, the data 12, the data nine, and the data 10. So we have redundancy. Uh, so it does this automatically for you. So when you first set up your cluster, if you got a small cluster, it will do the two plus one. As you add more hosts to the cluster, it's gonna say, oh, we hit that sixth number, right? Let's, let's, uh, do this encoding better, okay? Which is kind of cool, adaptive RAID 5. And the same thing uh, uh, goes here. Let's say, um, again, if I lost this host here. So I've got what, in this example, I've got six hosts. And the reason why it doesn't, it waits for six hosts is because it wants this, what they call a spare fault domain, right? Let me uh, kill this. So uh, let's go all the way back to here. Let's go to this picture here. And uh, oops. 
Let's try this again. Let's say right now I got my three hosts. I'm doing RAID 5, okay? If I lose this host here, or if I lose, or yeah, if I lose this host, um, I'm still running. I'm still okay. But at this point, if I lose another one, I'm dead in the water. So you're starting to sweat bullets, right? So you got to go, okay, what's wrong with that server? Maybe you got to get a new power supply system or whatever, whatever was wrong with it. So you've got an exposure here that if you lose one more device, you're dead in the water, right? So it's sort of like, think like hot spare hard drives, right? You know, yeah, okay, I'm going to do RAID 5 and RAID 10 and whatever on my storage, but it's probably a good idea to put some spare drives in there that are sitting there so when there's a failure, we can start rebuilding to it. That's kind of what they're doing with this adaptive RAID 5. If I add in, let's clean this. So if I add a fourth host here, it still stays at the 2 plus 1. Here's my fourth host. So it says, oh, okay, we've got a... We got a spare fault domain. So if this guy fails, we rebuild to this guy, which is good. Okay. If I put in another one, well, it doesn't, it doesn't change it over because it says, well, technically I could go to a four plus one, but then I have no, I have no, um, uh, spare, right? It could technically VMware could have said, all right, once you put your five hosts in, once you increase the five hosts, we could do a four plus one, but at that point you have no spare host if there's a failure. So this is why they wait till you hit six and it says, okay, let's, re let's restripe everything across. Now, if now you decide I'm gonna, this host fails, let's say that one fails, and 24 hours go by, uh, vSAN will basically say, hey, you know what? We haven't had that host replaced yet. I'm gonna convert this back to a two plus one. So it'll go back to whatever data, data, and parity, you know, to make sure that you've got a spare. So it does this automatically, okay? So, um, and I don't know if you can disable that or enable it or make it faster or whatever. I don't have any of that information. But that's what's new in vSAN, the express storage architecture with the adaptive RAID 5. So again, thanks for bringing that to my attention. Keep me honest, folks, in the, in the comments below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Hit a thumbs up if you like it. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. i got more vSAN stuff coming up. I'll also have some vSphere performance stuff coming up. These are requests from my subscribers. So if, if you want to see something, make a request. I will do my best. I'm on a limited budget. I'll do my best, see what I can do about it. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye now.